episode is all about toxic spirituality, the new age of cancel culture. So everybody, repeat after me. I love my life. I love my body. I love myself. Yeah, yeah. And I love making 10 grand a day. So the biggest killer in the West right now is ourselves, suicide. If you chant this mantra 108 times for one month, see what positive change happens in your life. The mission of the Chaff Show is if we change one person's inner monologue from I hate myself to I love myself, then we get to save one person's life. Now, is that, isn't that nice? I feel like Shinda's list every day. If you save one child, you've got to save all of them. I want to save all your inner childs. So join the Shaft Show online and in real life to become healthier, wealthier, sexier, sober, and a little bit more stylish. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on the not- notification. Uh, and notifications and today's episode is sponsored by the shaft method check out the library of online courses for personal development at tantroshaft.com all links provided and in today's episode we have the beautiful matt how do i pronounce your surname schwentek schwentek after all these years i still can't pronounce it i, I pronounce it schwentschwenk thanks Wink. He is the founder of Somatic Consent. He is one of the top Tantra teachers, and he is now an incredible YouTuber spreading his knowledge across the globe with multiple books, number one bestsellers on in his mother's shelf. And, uh, and I'd love you to introduce yourself, Matt Schwentek. Here we go. That's the book. There it is. Orgasmic Blueprint. Great cover. I'm doing right now on my channel a live reading every day, a chapter, what I really appreciate and, and, and enjoy. And I can't uh, uh, tell more about and support that what you just said about love yourself. And um, and I just came from a festival in Switzerland, from a Tantra festival, where I actually uh, read a few quotes. How the fuck can you love somebody else if you can't love yourself? And I love to start with the self-love, with this. Maybe you just change. Do, do you know what my Do you know what my new niche is? Say that again, please. Do you know what my new niche is when it comes to my job? No. Job. Tell me that. I help millionaires find love. There's three cycles of love: the acquisition of love, the maintenance of love, and then healing from love. So mm-hmm. I work with all of those uh, dimensions of love. I mean, after all, love is the best. This is why I do this. Do this stuff. I love your new niche, Helping Millionaire. Thank you. I mean, the the 1% need love too. That that what you can't buy with money, this is what we You cannot buy, exactly. You can't buy that shit with money. You can buy my services so I can help you. Anyway, so today's episode is Toxic Spirituality, the New Age of Council Culture. Now, I've spent maybe two years just complaining about how shit Tantra has become, spirituality has become. It's like the McDonald's of idiots jumping on this. Well, the monetization of Tantra is um, wellness. Um, Once upon a time when we went to Tantra, I call it the golden age of Tantra, it was we were doing it to reach enlightenment and we used to reach enlightenment. It was like, it wasn't hard. Now I mention about enlightenment because it's full of actual idiots. People don't believe that you could reach enlightenment anymore. Cause no one knows what they're doing. Yeah. It's, you know, this is, it's, 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 disgust. It's, so, it's so crazy and disgust. It's just so true. I have a question for you then. What is toxic spirituality? Can you explain what toxic spirituality is and how it's manifested in the new age movement? And have Mm. you ever encountered spiritual practices that felt more harmful than helpful? Mm. Uh, Well, I mean, the toxic part that I have uh, uh, experienced is that when, and it doesn't matter in which culture or in which dynamic, when people put themselves together, it's like the 
um, lobsters in the bucket. So when somebody's trying to climb out and just finding the way out, the one who can't reach it, they're just like, or, or can't reach the edge of the bucket and try to get out themselves. They're just like pulling the lobster back in. It's just like, you're not going anywhere. You just stick here with us. So they hang out all together. And when, you know, this is, this is what I've seen when your light starts to shine brighter. Um, and people getting envy, um, they just actually try to find something to make you wrong or put a shadow on, onto you. And what I have seen most in the tantric scene, um, what is most toxic is <clears throat> the so-called goddess syndrome. You know, women, the, 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 the feather tribe, you know. Just like, yes, goddess. You go, <laughs> goddess. Put that man down. Be flaky. Don't show up for him. But make don't sure he be, makes you feel safe. <laughs> don't don't be in your power because if you're in your power, you're dangerous. And I was just at the at the Tantra Festival in uh, in Switzerland, as I said, and I had a conversation with with different uh, other Tantra teacher, mostly female. <laughs> uh, uh, and 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 some of them said just like. Uh, yeah, Matt. So, what's what's going wrong, or what's going on with you in your kind of teaching and in your life? Because I've seen you have been cancelled in so many ways uh, from from different people. And I said, you know, specifically from the Wheel of Consent community, when I got excluded there, you know, it's just like, hey, I am a man. I'm male. I'm ident. I need to re-identify myself as male because the kind of um, a, a, a gender-neutral community wanted people like me being identified that they can literally put themselves in a certain position. So I'm happy to be back as a man, as a male. I'm in my strength and in my power. And men in their strength and in their power, they are literally responsible for all the destroyings in the world, the patriarchy, negativity, it's all on our shoulders. We have fucked it all up and we are responsible and we are the one who have to pay for it and have to suffer for it. And you you're know, the, this, you're the most dangerous person on the planet right now. I'm the most dangerous person on the planet. Heterosexual, said, male, white, and probably middle class, which makes you even worse. Yeah, I'm, you know, just like when I, when I see these people looking at me, they, 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 they hate me with a gaze. I and, know. And, 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 you know, this is, you know, I was researching this, this, this thing um, about uh, a psychopathic behavior. And I'm not saying that this is a psychopathic behavior, but psychopathic behavior, they're gathering this kind of minions around them. They're calling the flying monkeys that they throw then at the people that they want to destroy. And it's, 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 it's this is what the cancel culture is, as if they're just like getting their, 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 their envy butt together and projecting it on something, on somebody to make them wrong and to, um, you know, like the lobster in the bucket, pull them down because they can't get up themselves in the identification. And in this conversation that I had in Switzerland there, um, somebody of the Tantra teacher said to me, yeah, you are the typical um, expression of the, dark, of the dark masculine. And I said, yeah, I am dangerous, you know, yeah. and people can't handle their own scarcity when there is somebody in their power that is dangerous to them. And, you know, in danger is a lot of power, but using danger not for destructive purposes because I'm a fucking victim of the patriarchy myself and I needed to just like do everything to get myself out there and then I have to listen to that. Yeah, but you're in the privilege. It's easier for you to do that. Just like now I suffer the same thing, you know, but when you actually cancel all the strength of the dark masculine, this masculine power, if shit hits the fan, you know, and all your projective behavior... Um, has destroyed all this dark masculine uh, uh, strong man who is protecting you when the women, the goddesses, are the next in line being cancelled. Now, here's an interesting thought I had. Thank you for sharing. It is, it, I mean, a little bit of vulnerability, like, it must hurt a little bit. Like, deep down, like, there's only so much... Um, Oh, it's fine. Oh, it's it's what it is. It's like, do you know what? It's actually for me. It genuinely hurts. It's mean. 
Like I, I figured out how these people speak. So I flip it back to them. So I actually say how much is how much their projections, perceptions and judgments is genuinely hurting me. And I find it sometimes hard to get out of bed. But luckily, I'm Bangladeshi, Muslim and a lesbian. So I'm right on trend. <laughs> Woohoo! Our different techniques that we use, uh, mine's the only de-armoring, the only massage, yours is um, will of consent and all the beautiful other stuff that you do with body work. And we actually see these women start to live a healthy, normal life. And they're able to connect with the masculine again. And we're able to help them and support them and finally see them get married and have babies. Like this is one of the joys of our lives. If you want to cancel people like us, it's like you're just shooting yourself in the head because you don't understand what you're talking about because you're influenced by your phones because in real life, this isn't really happening. Mm -hmm. Now, we have been supporting the rise. We have a lot to do with this culture of the rise of the goddesses because we helped all of those women. A lot of those tantra teachers, we supported them. Like we actually either gave them sessions or we supported each other and we helped each other heal. And they went light years ahead. And this global awakening around the feminine energy is great. But look what's going on right now. More and more trans people emerging ever before. The feminine energy isn't just in a woman, it's in men. More estrogen in our bodies than ever before. We really have awakened the feminine energy. Girl groups like Spice Girls have been around since 1996. It, female empowerment is way more louder. Now there's more Marvel characters who are super, super women. Um, there are more leading women in all of these films. So yes, the goddess rising has won. We did it. Well done. But look at the state of our men. What are it's, your thoughts on this? It's it's so so interesting. You know, just a few months ago, I got accused of rape. Yeah. Again. No, no, it's the same story. It's the same it's story. The same it, was, story. It, it was in 2010, and this is one of this kind of white tantra goddesses who actually mm -hmm. want to uh, uh, secure their position in spiritual leadership, you know? Yeah. And to do that, you have to destroy masculine or man in action from a victim mentality to use it from a toxic weapon to put people in a perpetrator position. And I, I personally cancel the wheel of consent radically anyway to go back to this point um what you just said how does uh, um, a man think about that what i'm sharing is you know the women i've been working with over the years and i've kind of transitioning slowly away from working with women what i still love to do so i just actually provide session for women having this experience but more like this women asking me can't you teach that to my lover, to my husband? So, so I transitioning more in working with men, coming into this power, in, back into this power of their masculinity, of their manhood, you know, that includes as well your, like you said, your vulnerability, your feminine side, your softness, your, your uh, uh, you know, connection to nature and, and you know, your sweetness. But this is mostly what I do. And I educate as well practitioners, specifically male practitioner, to do this work to more men and to women to empower them, you know. And there, there, there is this, this, this quote from, um, from Lenin, that's this, I don't know, few, it's 100 years old, where he said this, when the revolution is, eating their children, you know, this is exactly what I feel is happening. We're supporting all these women into their um, empowerment, into their sexual truth, into surrender and into being capable of rising up on this point. And then kind of to secure their position, they're just like cutting off the, the legs of the chair where they put the masculine on a pedestal and then making them responsible for the destructive part in the world is just like what the fuck are they thinking now i hear you and again i i you must be going through it especially with allegations as severe as that 
And I see this a lot in the culture we live in. If there is a strong man, and I, I want everyone to know we work with rape victims. We understand the different nuances between the perpetrator and the victim. And it's never a, like it's never black or white. There's always uh, some nuances. And I always say if there has been some kind of rape thing, please go to the police. Please go to the law. Like yeah. that's not social media. Yeah. Go to the, the law has been broken. Go to the police. I have been in many communities where I've been the main space holder between um, the rapist and the victim. And very often I've seen a very gray area where she didn't say no in the moment. And afterwards she felt terrible. And then that story built up. And then she got the reflections from the women in her community. And then he became a rapist. And then I had to find out what really happened. And mm -hmm. that's been my role as an elder in a lot of these communities that are starting off where boundaries and consent isn't so vocalized. And this is why it's so important to teach the foundations of boundaries and consent. But we do live in a culture now where a man is guilty until he's proven innocent. I've been in so many cases where women and men and social media have become a place like a witch hunt towards men. A man is instantly guilty when the yeah. R word comes up. You have and no chance. Yeah. Exactly. And his, his business has gone like that overnight. And sometimes these men are not guilty. And sometimes these men are. So we need to live in a, a society where we just go back to the, the good old ways of a man is innocent until he's proven guilty because women aren't always, like words come out of their tr uh, mouth isn't always the truth and vice versa. This is why we have the police. This is why we go to court. This is why we have the law because the law has been broken. So yeah. this is what I encourage everyone in my communities if something like that has happened, please go to the police. This is this is so interesting. You know, in my case, for example, what is uh, 14 years ago, um, there, there's a law in Sweden that is literally saying if if you haven't been to the police within this 10 years, the, the case is irrelevant. So no one is looking at that anymore. And with that specific woman, I had, you know, nine years till 1920, uh, really a deep, heartfelt friendship communication. Mm. And all of a sudden, I don't know what has happened. Um, but this is exactly the case, what you share, you know, everything seems to be okay till, you know, women share that in their community. And then all of a sudden, and then everyone have, says, it's and you, not have okay. a, you have a group of victimized kind of people together, or in this case, women together, uh, who have not worked through their trauma and all they want to do is just like just convincing that woman there, well, you have yeah. been a victim of rape, right? Yeah. And then because making an allegation like that, you know, as you said, you are proven innocent till you being guilty. A, a, this case can't be going into court. What I have suggested her um, to do, you know, just like I'm totally, I'm totally transparent with everything. I'm just totally willing mm. to share that. And um, it's just it's just an interesting thing. And you know, I was making a, a public statement on my I have it as well here on on YouTube and on my wall. And I had some some dear friends, coaches, and therapists reaching out, and and they said just like you know what, um, that you make a public statement that you haven't that you haven't raped anybody ever in your life um, is enough to say. But then I was explaining exactly what we're talking about here, what is happening. And then he said, this starts to sound like you need to excuse and explain something. And when you do that, this is, again, a proven that you're guilty because you're not, you, you, you're not showing up in your full power and saying just like, stop that bullshit and stop saying that because it's not true. Yeah. Now it's, it's it's just like you can't win in this environment. You, you, you can't win. Um, I remember one of my uh, beloveds. She used to work in um, interior design in London. We got together, and then she became a, one of the top tantra teachers. Like she left her 
career and everything. And the first thing she noticed, and this is a woman's words, um, about the spiritual tantric community was, it feels like there's victims helping victims here. And this is how it is. It's, there's, there's two little bubbles I noticed in the world we've been in. The spiritual bubble, the bigger bubble, and inside of it is the uh, the tantra bubble. I always found the tantra bubble to be cool. Like right? tantra bubble is actually great because we we laugh and we take the piss. We do a thing called sarcasm, uh, which is frowned upon in spirituality, um, and and we just dick about. We just have fun uh, because we remember that this is all a game, a leela. And the beautiful thing about the tantric path is that it is um, integrated. Now, outside of the, the, the bubble is the uh, spiritual fundamentalist community. It is <laughs> tougher in America to thrive than it is anywhere else as a sober person. Because I, I was stuck in that community for a really long time because I didn't drink or take drugs. I'm actually banned from one of the top festivals, one of my favorite festivals, because there's a rumor going around, because someone didn't like me, that I was taking drugs in, in the festival. I've been sober for 10 years. So people at that festival, the organizers, they are believing this rumor than my truth. And I've been a big uh, supporter of that festival for years. That was actually one of my homes. Mm -hmm. And I've had life-changing... It's, it's super sucky. And it is a shame that these lies and these rumors and these Chinese whispers are more truthful than the truth. And I've also been in certain communities where, again, along the, 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 the line of allegations, especially severe allegations, there's always now this is the horrible thing about cancer culture. So this is also in mainstream culture. Russell Brand, for example, for allegations of the R word. He handled it very well. He didn't even address it. He just went, go to Rumble, follow me there. He's gonna he's been taken down, and he could take down any good man or any man by just saying the R word. That's it. It's like, okay, take him down, boom, done. Okay, another one, take him down, boom. It's like it's it's happened to every single um like man speaking their truth um and it is a case of guilty until proven innocent i've I've, I've something coming into my mind while you speak another part of toxic spirituality specifically in the tantric scene and you know you know there there are this this different directions in tantra is you know how many viewers now, you know, that you have the white tantra, the more like the yogi path, and then you have kind of, it goes more in the realm of, you know, green and red and and, and dark and black tantra. And, you know, there are different explanations to different colors to that. I don't want to go into that. But what I've seen and what is the toxic part in the so-called yogic path of tantra is, and I see that on festivals again and again, and when I hear that, it's just like my... My, my, my foot nails goes weak, goes up. And it, it is like when they say, well, it's just like Tantra is not about sexuality. So sexuality is just a tiny little part in Tantra when they justify their um, abstinence from integrated sexuality and embodied empowered sexuality. And I have seen that in so many cases that this is, has been used as, a, as an excuse Specifically, when it comes to sensuality, uh, where where, and I've seen that in, in in many women, more in men, that women say just like I am a total cuddle slut, where sensuality has systematically misused to avoid being sexual, and everything that is sexual is literally the evil because they have still an unresolved traumatic experience, and I'm so sorry when I hear that. And that, that they that they are stuck in this belief system that and, and 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 literally you know grouping up 
that everybody who is doing Tantra and is liberating sexuality in an empowered place or into a place of embodiment and empowerment, that we are the evil ones. Because you are the evil ones. This is, this is unbelievable. You and are is, the evil ones. And this is, this is so toxic be, between being amongst between these people because it's just like, it's just whatever you say. It's, it's always been man. like this. It's always been like this. Like I have to deal for the last 10 years. This is why I'm out of that community. Like I am, I have to do a hard no to that world. Now I'm going to do two more tantra festivals and that's it. I'm tapping out. And I say this, I've been saying that for two years. Like there, there's a part of me that still loves it, but there's a part of me that fucking hates it because it is just full of idiots there's nothing worse than like wannabe teachers becoming teachers and they're on top of mount stupid like telling everybody this is the tantra like my tantra is better than your tantra what's happening right now is everybody's doing one fucking ista training they're going back home and they're running temple parties. That becomes Tantra. Now, this is the bullshit that we're dealing with every single day now. And this is why I'm tapping out because we have have a go healers. Do you know the worst type of have a go healers? Women. Do you know why? Because they project their traumas onto a woman going through a healing session. Now, this is the worst cases I have come across. I, I do my certification trainings and I'm very strict on safety. <clears throat> women i know you're listening listen to this have you been in a healing session and the woman healer who you trust and also don't know has said you have been raped by your grandfather i see that you have been molested when you were a child and then you go home and you tell <clears throat> you either live with it and that sits with you and drives you insane or you go to your parents and you start having a discussion and maybe something comes up, but also maybe you've ruined your family unit because you decided to go on this spiritual awakening path and someone who doesn't know you made an assumption and that's fucked you up for life. Mm -hmm. And that happens over and over again. How do I know? Because I've seen my friends, my good friends being sectioned and put into mental institutes because of random healers who have said these horrible words when they are in a very vulnerable, open state. That's not how you heal people, by projecting your assumptions. You, What you want to do is let them feel all emotions are welcome. Don't say, I'm having a download. You need to be humble. I'm having a download. I see that this happened. No, that's how you're just making stuff up. It's you a know, disaster out there. And the, the also, we... Workshop, um, weekend workshop facilitators, they also do my head in. The, the bar out there is so low. Over to you, Matt. The, the interesting thing is what you just said is, is it's so true, you know, specifically when it comes to empowerment in sessions, when I, when I hear women saying just like, yeah, I'm... Uh, I don't want to work with men because men are bad and evil. They have all the sexual uh, agenda. And I only work with women. And then I hear them saying, just like, yeah, of course, women work is that what I mostly love to do. But, you know, the real money that I make is in giving tantric session. And uh, there's nothing wrong about giving a hand job and paying my rent. You know, it's just like I've seen so many women doing that. And then of, on another point, they're just like starting to get away from giving that hand job. Uh, so, so this gratification uh, um, uh, thing where they make money with and starting to judge men for their neediness, only wanting to have this tantric approach for their own justification of an addiction or just like uh, getting their, their uh, uh, addiction kind of uh, uh, fulfilled and, and met. And it's 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 an it's an interesting dynamic to to feel around that specifically when it comes to um, no okay just I, I leave it here I just wanna I <laughs> wanted to say this part. Now, what is the future? How can we turn this around? Uh, in fact, what do you predict for the future? And how can we? How can, how can we heal from this? How can we move on from this? And as a as a human who's going through this, like 
every man out there, you're fucked and not in a good way. It's, it's fucked out there. It's, it's not good for any heterosexual, white, cis, identifying male. This is why the, the option of being a woman or trans is better than it is to be a man. Now, I'm, I'm seeing this everywhere. So I don't what, even know. I don't even know what cis means. I don't belong in the category of cis. I'm an identified male. I'm a man, and cis is just an, is, is is just a terminology that came from the trans community that has been throwing out in the world and put that on heterosexual men and women. So cis is actually a word that doesn't exist. Um, so I, I I don't agree to that. I'm not cis. Um, I don't even know what it meant. I, I mean, luckily I was a lesbian, so like I, right. I just want to, I just want everybody to know, I was one of the pioneers in getting men to be more feminine. So in the tantra festivals, I, I always identified as a lesbian. You, you knew me as that. Now, who would have thought, Matt, that this would be trending and cool as fuck to do now? I, I, I love that because. Before I had to identify myself back into the white male privilege, I felt myself, you know, I'm multisexual and I felt more like a lesbian than actually a male uh, a heterosexual man, you know. Mm. But just like, you know, I'm okay, I'm okay and, and good in this position and I don't need to create another... Uh, identification exactly, to yeah. save my ass. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm totally happy with that. But I want to go back to this question that you just uh, asked. Yeah, how do you and, heal from and, this? What do you see the future being? Yeah, and an interesting thing is, and that's true for every human being, even in the best case, we have all been touched against our will before we could mm. speak because we have been taken care for. And as a little infant, something we just might didn't like. And when we have been touched against our will, we have all learned to like what we don't like and go along with stuff than actually changing what we don't like. And this is how the behavior in most people has been occurring. And what you just said, you know, the the projection of, yeah, you have been touched by your grandfather or by your father, anything is, yeah, of course, you know, to some degree we probably have, but I don't think that this was with the best, in, was, 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 a, was a worst intention to harm anybody. And there are cases where this has happened, you know, and in this cases, healing can happen. And the worst case is if somebody has been, um, in an in an in a place of sexual um, misuse, there is a way of addressing that and healing that. The worst case is the avoided sexual abuse, and the avoided sexual abuse is this where the father is literally has withdrawn from the child, awakening their sexual energy, and then the father didn't know what to do with that and just like just pushes away from this dynamic, and then the the upgrowing child or, 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 or girl or, you know, sometimes boy have that as well with their mom, they're looking their entire life for this healthy father figure that is literally giving this little girl, this little child, the approval that your sexuality is welcome, your sexuality is okay, you are beautiful, and I'm not available. So all these women projecting their sexual energy out in the world and just like putting their radiance out there to attract this healing dynamic. And then, you know, of course there are men out there, they're just taking this seduction uh, as an invitation, what it is in a, in, in a certain way. And then they have sex. And then this appearance in most women's behavior is just like, okay, now I have been sexually used against my will and it is that man's fault without addressing this father thing so so i would say probably 90 percent of women carrying this wound in early childhood in, in early age and it has not been addressed and in, in in systemic work and family constellation this comes pretty obvious into the onto the surface but what i want to say where we need to go is specifically in this, you know, we don't need to call it even spiritual or tantra, but from this perspective of who we are as humans in a society identified as men and women, what is probably still 90% of humans, just like we have to do that together. We cannot cut each other into pieces, into half, and then kind of liberating the feminine side or the masculine side, and then kind of, if this 
war of gender doesn't stop we will continue fighting and we stop it by bringing yeah. ourselves together and so we do that in our dearmoring training for example where where we have this men and women completely projecting on the other side of this gender uh, 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 domain and then everybody sees their own projection you know and mm. then just like how can you how can you heal that projection and how can you come into truth and alignment into forgiveness about your own projections of your own unhealed aspect and how can you make that connection with this other being in front of you without making them wrong because you have not forgiven yourself. Beautiful. Wow. I mean, that's the key thing, isn't it? My, my, my purpose on this planet is to find world peace through intimacy. There is no more blaming and shaming between men and women, but vulnerability, shared, shared vulnerability, authenticity, and co-creation. Like if there was a God, he created earth, they created earth, it created earth. And, you know, God made man in his own image. So we're stuff of the gods. And he went to make a cup of tea. It's like, okay, perfect garden of Eden, the whole planet's garden of Eden. We've got like, it's, it's just one big garden, it's Pangaea. We've got, you know, a couple of Adam and Eve and Adam and Steve and all of them just knocking around in Lilith. Oh, we're going to make a cup of tea. Can't go wrong. They are given everything on that planet. Every single thing to cure cancer, I give. it's all for free. All they got to do, I can't wait to have my cup of tea, I, all they got to do is just conceive and create. That's it. Conceive and create. Make love and be an artist. They can't fuck, they can't, they, they actually can't fuck it up. Right, I'm gonna make a cup of tea. Okay, what have you done to the fucking planet, you idiots? I gave you free will. Why is everyone going to war over me? What? Because there's this one sentence in Tantra that gets like really bastardized and turned into a belief system, a fundamentalist belief system called polarity, huge in America, Massive misconceptions about how to be a man and how to be a woman. They don't say that that is inside of a man and a woman and that is inside a man and a woman. They just say polarity. You protect and provide. You surrender, relax, be a housewife. It's like it's 1960s all over again. Anyway, the whole thing's fucked. The future of this is it's going to fuck up and then out of it something new will occur. Tantra is going to be – we've been through this cycle already in the 1960s. Thank you, the Beatles. Thank you, Ravi Shankar. Thank you, all the beautiful people that brought that into that reality. Thank you, Osho. But then, you know, they were great in that period. Then there's documentaries made about them. Now they're evil. Nothing changed apart from people looking back and making stories about it to sell products. Tantra was just one thing where tantra yoga meditation and everything now because of marketing and selling is called breath work somatic awareness um somatic somatic consent um mindfulness um and all the other different things mobility it's called mobility now so there's all these different things that they created from one thing which is in the ancient scriptures itself like, it's just a big marketing game who can make the most money out of this. This is why I'm tapping out. I'm getting out of here. I'm in another community where people actually love and support me and encourage me rather than 27-year-old life coaches who are watching Instagram and have 50,000 followers come up to me and tell me I need to be humble. It's like, screw you. I'm out of here. Toxic <laughs> spirituality. You go and implode. You start policing yourself. All the people that are... And trust me, they are mentally insane and ungrounded and very unsafe to be around. They're teaching people now. And I'm seeing this and it is dangerous, a horrible place to be in. There is better communities out there. There are, I mean, I'm having to build one here in London, which is wealthy. So no scarcity mentality. You've got to have a job. You can't deal just with being a child and heal, heal, heal. You have to have a job in this community. You've got to be wealthy, healthy, you know, have a purpose, not just floating around in Peter Pania. Healthy, uh, so wealthy, healthy, people who actually take care of their bodies. 
Like I don't like the the blue hair brigade. You do you. You enjoy being you. But really, where you do need to take care of everybody else. You're gonna have what I have, which is free herniated discs, and I need to go to a gym and fix that now. So, being healthy, wealthy, healthy, sexy, be confident, be charismatic, overcome your social anxiety, share your desires, have boundaries like a ninja, and sober. This is the hardest part. Mm. Like. I'm finding it impossible to find a sober, sexy, healthy, wealthy community because if you're sober, you're traumatized. If you're sober, you're woke and that's shit. Mm. Whereas if you're healthy, wealthy and sexy, you're drinking, you're taking drugs. So I'm in no man's land again. And I'm transitioning from this toxic spirituality term, which I put in, put them in a box. I know what I don't like. I'm creating what I do like. And I want everyone listening, create the reality you want to live in. Don't get brainwashed by idiots and become yeah. who you're meant to be. Matt, final words. Yeah, fantastic what you say. I I, I copy that. It's absolutely beautiful. And, um, yeah, create the reality that you want to live in. And, uh, you know, a Tantra is a, is a fantastic step, first step out out of the status quo into a place of coming into another reality away from this Christianity-based um, family unit, you know, just like we're just coming more to a collective. The other side, you know, the spitting out can be the toxic uh, spirituality in this tantric field. And when you're being spit out on the other side and you survive, then there are people out there who will catch you and going with you in a, in, in a direction that is sustainable. And this is what I hear you saying, and I appreciate that. Hmm. It is a journey. It's We've a journey. lived long enough to be the heroes celebrated and then eventually become the villains. Nothing changed apart from people's perspectives. I used yeah. to say that a lot. That comes from Batman, by the way. <laughs> So I wish you all the best on your journey. I pray that all of the, um, these terrible allegations, like they they all vanish and evaporate and you get to heal that connection with your old friend who you were once friends with. And it 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 it's a it's a it's a, a world that we live in. My final yeah. words are everybody that's healing, heal. There's life outside of healing. Once you're healed, remember, you get a cut. That heals itself. When you've got those cuts inside of you, go to the healing stuff. Eventually, you will heal. Don't get trapped in a toxic uh, spirituality scene where they say you will never heal. Mm. That is limited beliefs. Please, you will heal. Then go and have fun. Remember, conceive and create. That's all you have to do, two things. Enjoy life, conceive. Enjoy career. life, exactly. Yeah. Don't get stuck in the victims of helping victims. So everybody watching, thank you. Let's give it up to to Matt. This has been way longer than normal that I do, but this has thank been you. so juicy that let's 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 get a couple of old guys talking <laughs> and bitching and moaning about the world we've just been in. Everybody who's just about to go into this world. Watch out. We are a lot older than you. And trust us, we've seen it, done it all. And like, you realize it's just a pattern and history repeating itself. So thank you, Matt. Where can we find you? Uh, Somatic uh, Consent here on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. Same on website, somaticconsent.com. Uh, the new page is somaticeros.com. Mm -hmm. So going back into the erotic uh, professionalism of my work. And um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open to uh, talk with people without selling them a high ticket because they just either want to work with me or not. And I'm totally yeah. relaxed either way. Beautiful. So if you want more insights around maintaining a healthy, wealthy, sexy, sober life, make sure you tune in to Matt and myself on this channel. You've been listening to The Shaft Show. Remember, the star of the show is you. So repeat after me. Come on, Matt, you can do, do this with me. I love my life. I love my cock. I love my body. <laughs> I love my heart. I love myself. I love myself. 
And I love making 10 grand a day. <laughs> no more. <laughs> so let's change lives, live together. And like my mission is, you know, changing the world one orgasm at a time. But let's change the world with one positive thought at a, start, a time. If I could change one person's inner monologue from I hate myself to I love myself, then I get to change one person's life. A big thanks to our sponsor, The Shaft Method. Visit tantraofshaft.com or any of the links below provided for a vast library of online courses around tantra and personal development. And make sure you show your appreciation by smashing up that like and share this with your friends. And make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications because I'm doing this every day. I just don't know when. And um, let's build the Shaft Show community online and in real life and become healthier, wealthier, sexy and sober together. And if you're liking what we'll see, uh, there's a membership program on YouTube. You could click on the membership and if there's members, I could do cool stuff for you. So I could do collective coaching. I just got monetized yesterday. Like I was not monetized for a little while because they took away all my stuff. So I've monetized again. So please, if you want to build this community, click the membership, there's different membership profiles and uh, I can start coaching you in real time. So thank you. I love you. And I said, you're free. Thanks for this having me. Great. Au revoir. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Bye.